Hello friends and welcome back to this series and we are discussing C++ programming language. In this video, we are going to learn destructor and copy constructor. But yeah, let's begin our discussion with destructor. Destructor is quite similar to that of constructor. That is, it's a special kind of member function with the name as same as your class name. And constructor has a purpose of initializing the data members of your class. Similarly, destructor has a purpose of deinitializing your data members. What do I mean by deinitializing? So in normal cases, let's say if you are two data members, integer x and integer y, like we had in our n complex class, the complex number class that we were studying until last video, right? So we had just two data members of type int. In this case, writing a destructor doesn't make much sense because your data members are not being initialized with any vital resource such as dynamically allotted memory or let's say database connection or let's say file connection. So if one of your data members is consuming resources like this such as dynamically allocated memory or a database connection or a file read connection, right? If you are initializing your data members in your constructor with things like these, it is very important that when your object goes out of scope to free up the resources, to free up these resources being consumed by your data members when you do not need your object anymore. So generally what happens is that when your object goes out of scope, the system automatically calls the destructor. Right now, C++ provides you with a default destructor. It doesn't have any code in it, so nothing will happen. But it is your responsibility if your data members are consuming resources like this. It is your programmer's responsibility that when your object goes out of scope, then you must free up these resources. And where do you write that code of freeing up these resources? You write that code in your destructor. So before your object goes out of scope, suppose this is your function, let's say my function. And here you are creating your object, let's say B string class and I'm creating C1, right? When this function concludes, right? Whenever the execution of this function concludes, this C1 object will go out of scope, right? So at that time, automatically destructor will be called and here you should write the code to deallocate the dynamically allocated memory or to close the database connection or to close the file connection that is open, right? So this is the responsibility of programmer to write a destructor where the programmer has to write the code to free up the resources before the object goes out of scope, right? So let's just implement this concept now. We will try to simulate the string behavior, the string data type behavior. So I'm gonna write a class called as B string. And so this will be my B string class. My B string class will have some private data members, integer m size, size of the string. And I'll say, I'll need a character pointer content. I would like to write a constructor. I'll write a parameterized constructor because default constructor won't serve my purpose. So I'll say B string, right? And I'm going to need a string, right? So I'll just say cat star C. And what I'm going to do here in this constructor is that I'll find out the length, str length. This is a library function of this input string. Then I'll say my content, my data member, right? So I'll use this arrow content so as to distinguish content, I'll allocate the memory dynamically, new, care, and how many care? I need length, calculated, plus one to store the null character at the end, right? So I'll allocate memory dynamically, and then I'll use string copy to copy that string, the passed on string into my content, right? So this is my parameterized constructor, right? Now, what will happen? So I'll write my 
main function here. Well, let's first see how this object will get created. So I'll just create one object, b string. Uh, let's say b1, and I'll straight away call the parameterized constructor by saying b barters. So I'm trying to create this object b1 of type b string, right? So parameterized constructor will be called. Hmm? So now, if you look at this on your memory structure, right? So this is our code segment. And this is our data segment stack heap and data section. Now, once you create this object, this object B1, it will be created on stack, right? B1, this constructor will be called, right? Parameterized constructor. So what are we doing here? In one of our data members, that is this content, which is a character pointer, we are allocating memory dynamically using this new keyword, right? So let's say B barters, how much is the length of one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So eight character plus one, nine character memory here will be allocated from heap, right? And the address of which will be stored. So let's say this address is thousand of this memory block from heap. It will be stored in this content part of the object. Okay, so we forgot one thing. We forgot to initialize the other data member. So instead of this, I'll just say, this arrow m size equal to string length of input and here instead of length i'll say m size plus one see sometimes i can use this arrow m size some can i sometimes i can use m size it it's interchangeable you know that this pointer is implicitly available so you can use it as you wish right for consistency sake i will say either use it either don't use it but here i am using it according to the space i have on my whiteboard so i'll run through again so when you try to create this object b1 right you pass on this string b barters what will happen is that b1 will get created on the stack right b1 has two data members right m size and a character pointer content so in the constructor we first assign value to m size as string length of input what is the string length eight so your m size will be eight then your this arrow contain the other data member is dynamically assigned memory how much m size eight plus one nine nine character so this nine character block is assigned dynamically from heap and the starting address of this block will be stored in this content part content data member of your object so this is our content and then the contents of the input b barters will be copied onto this address right string copy will happen at this address so we'll have b bar ters right along with null character so this is the way i'm using my constructor in my b string class so this is how object is getting created now imagine we have some logic right few lines of code and then we are writing calling a function called as my function i'll write this function here so let's say void my function right what this function does it creates another object b string b1 let's say c barters right and then it does some activities with that object right here and that's it so the point here is that this my function is called several times let's suppose here again it is called in different color for different purpose right let us say it is called few times in your main every time this my function will create a b string object right every time we'll have to allocate memory on heap right like we just saw how this b1 object was getting created we will allocate memory from heap for this data member right for storing the string so this will happen a lot of times based on number of times you create this object in these functions now the problem is here in this function when this function execution finishes when this when the execution of this my function is finished here at this point this object local object goes out of scope right during the creation of this object we allocated memory from heap dynamically 
but we haven't called the delete content right we haven't called this we haven't freed the dynamically allocated memory that means it will cause memory leakage because this memory will remain allocated even though the object which was requiring it is gone out of scope that means it has not been deallocated and we have no way to access this allocated memory because that object has gone out of scope and with it its data member content through which we were accessing the memory so it is our responsibility that whenever this object goes out of scope be it here in main or be it here in my function the memory that its data member content got allocated must be freed explicitly so as you know whenever the object goes out of scope its destructor gets called right when we do not specify any destructor a default destructor gets called which is provided by c++ which has no code which has nothing blank right so now let us write a destructor our own destructor and in it let us free the dynamically allocated memory to this content data member so that there is no more memory leakage when our objects go out of scope so the way you write destructor name of the destructor is again same as name of the constructor only difference is you have to add this till then destructor cannot have any parameters you cannot pass any parameters to destructors right and you cannot write more than one destructor there is only one destructor if you do not write one c++ gives you the default one but in case you write one you can only write one with no parameters obviously destructor like constructor will also get the implicit this pointer so we'll just say delete right i'm using array subscript operator because i know i am allocated memory for one more more than one character most of the time so i'll say delete and then i'll say this arrow contain the pointer because pointer stores the base address of the dynamically allocated memory so i'll say delete subscript operator because i know the allocated memory is more than one character and then i'm say this arrow contain for getting the starting address of that dynamically allocated memory which is in my content data member so this will deallocate the memory maybe optionally i'll set it to null so my pointer will point to null this is optional so this is how i deallocate my memory through my destructor whenever my object goes out of scope right remember this is one example but this should be repeated in case your one of your data members are consuming resources such as dynamically allocated memory or database connection so in that case you will close the connection here in destructor or it's it's opening a file reading connection then you must close that connection here any vital resource if your data members are holding any vital resource you should clear them up you should uh, deallocate those resources in your destructor right so this is how you write destructor now let's talk about copy constructor 